Domestic Abuse Seven Minute Snippet Series. This is session one, Signs of Abuse. This short training snippet is part of a series of sessions created by Oasis Domestic Abuse Service in partnership with East Kent Domestic Abuse Forum. This is part one of five snippets. The others are safety planning, safe inquiry, signposting and support, understanding risk. These snippets were created to give busy people the opportunity to use the seven minutes it takes to have a coffee break to give you a very basic understanding of domestic abuse, allow you to feel more comfortable to ask about the abuse and offer some support before signposting to services while considering risk at all times. We ask all managers to allow their staff the five additional coffee breaks it takes to watch this series. A minimum of two people a week are killed by someone that they believe loved them. How many of those could have received some support if we knew enough just to ask them? The power and control wheel. So this power and control wheel is an adaptation of the original wheel which was developed in Duluth, Minnesota in the early 1980s. Alongside these tactics on any wheel are physical and sexual violence. And it gives a really good indication of the types of abuse that will be inflicted upon those those people that we want to talk to today. So they could be using coercion and threats, so making out threats to carry out something or do something, maybe threatening to end their own life or threatening to report you to agencies. Using intimidation, and you could do that by fear, you could do that by a look or a physical gesture to intimidate. Using emotional abuse, put-downs, shame, name-calling, and isolation. Controlling your activities in a friendship, where you go, who you speak to, and using disability to control and isolate you. Minimising, denying and blaming because it's never their fault, it's always our fault, making light of the abuse, not taking our concerns seriously and saying things just didn't happen. Using children, creating guilt. We all feel guilty often when we have children. However, that guilt will be used to abuse. And gender and sexual orientation and privilege, domineering, making big decisions, using stereotypical roles. And of course, homophobia and transphobia. Do you know that domestic abuse can happen to anyone, regardless of their age, gender or their social education, religious or financial status? It occurs when one person in a relationship attempts to dominate and control the other person. Now, this abuse could be psychological, physical, sexual, financial and emotional. The Home Office definition of domestic abuse states that it's between those aged 16 and over, but abuse can happen at a much younger age than that. It would, though, be considered child abuse. Abuse is not only from an intimate partner or ex-intimate partner. It can also be from a family member, including often a family member that could be presenting to you as a carer. Out of fear or shame, many victims of domestic abuse will try to hide it or deny it. And in the process of trying to cover it up, they exhibit signs that abuse is taking place. If you suspect someone you know has experienced domestic abuse, the following list of signs could be a clue. Signs you might notice as a professional or even as a friend. Bruises or physical injuries, sometimes frequently, for which they've got a weak or inconsistent explanation. Often, though, these will be hidden by long sleeves, polar necks, sunglasses and nowadays makeup. Does the abuser tend to attend every appointment or meeting with them, often answering all of the questions on their behalf, which you then might notice increases their feelings of anxiety? The abuser constantly calls or texts them wanting to know where they are, what they're doing or who they're with. You might notice that the abuser even follows them to check up on them, often waiting outside for them. They may have very little money available to them or may have to account for every penny they spend. Can they even afford to get the bus home or pay for necessary medication, especially when this was not previously an issue? Signs of abuse in someone you know. A person who was once chatty and the life and soul of the party, who's now really suddenly quiet, reserved and distant. They may be isolating themselves from those whose company they once enjoyed. And this might be because financially they can't afford to go out, because they're prevented from making contact, or maybe they're worried about what you will see. If they have children, the children may seem timid, frightened or extremely well behaved when the partner is around. They are very likely to seem sad putting on a brave face when you know that there is something not quite right around their abuser 
They may make excuses for the abuser's bad temper, such as stress at work or use of alcohol. They may also exhibit a constant state of alertness to the point that they can never completely relax, which might also affect their sleep and may continue long after separation. They feel paralysed to make decisions or even to protect themselves or on occasion their children. Domestic abuse can take an emotional toll on victims to the extent that they will exhibit a sense of helplessness, hopelessness or despair. They can come to believe that they will never escape the control of the abuser. They may seem anxious or nervous even when they're away from the abuser or they may seem overly anxious to please the abuser. They have to ask permission to go anywhere or to meet people. They may refer to their partner as jealous or possessive. They may say their partner accuses them of having affairs. Other emotional signs of abuse. This could be low self-esteem because we quickly start to believe all the negative things that are said about us. We could appear to be extremely apologetic or meek. After all, we're made to believe that everything is our fault. Signs of agitation, anxiety or constant apprehension. We might even develop a drug or alcohol problem as a coping strategy. Symptoms of depression, which includes loss of interest in our daily activities. We might even talk about or attempt suicide. Now, these symptoms, of course, could be due to many other conditions or factors, but they are typical of domestic abuse victims who feel that they're trapped in abusive relationships. What now? Please watch the other four snippet sessions. If you're a manager, please allow for those four additional coffee breaks. If this is happening to someone you know or work with, you can call local or national helplines such as the Free Phone National Domestic Abuse Helpline on 0808 2000 24 7 for women. For men, the Men's Advice Line on 0808 327. And if you identify as LGBT+, call Gallup on 0800 999 5428. For forced marriage or honour crimes, you could call Carmen Nirvana on 0800 5999 247. But if you think that someone is at serious or immediate risk, you must call the police on 999, being clear about your concerns. And please ensure that you're making safeguarding referrals as appropriate. Please never judge. The biggest barrier to someone disclosing domestic abuse is previous unhelpful or negative responses. How would you want to be treated if this was you?